Hi, my name is Erin Shuttleworth. I'm a comic artist and illustrator based in Trail, BC. And today I'm going to be talking about my studio and some tips and tricks on getting started depending on what you would like to start doing in your own art practice. So I'm kind of a little, a bit of a jack of all trades. I, first and foremost, comics are my focus. So I do daily comics on my Instagram and I also write a couple of comic book series like Skeleton Joe and Mindless Muse. And then I also do illustrations and prints and commissions. So I have three kind of workstations in my house. You always see these beautiful like Instagram workshops um, and I just don't have that. So first I have my computer, uh, which I have upstairs so that I can kind of multitask and take care of my daughter as well as kind of um, do any graphic design, anything kind of like technical and a little bit more time consuming. I do it upstairs so that I can interact with my family um, and I'm not just like in a little dungeon working on projects for hours at a time. So I do the bulk of my graphic design work at my computer and um, also some illustration, but I have kind of transitioned more to working on my iPad just because it's a lot more flexible on when and where I can work on it. Um, so secondly is down my stairs, I have a little hobby room where I do all of my Cricut work as well as any of my sewing. So I do dice bags where I do heat transfer vinyl that I press on top of it. So I use my iPad to create the file and then print it on my Cricut and then I attach it with just a simple iron onto the dice bag. So it's quite a few processes to make my dice bags, but they're really cute and unique once they're done. And I keep all the stuff for them in my little hobby room so I'm not wandering around the house working on bits and pieces. I'm able to, you know, sew 10 bags at a time and then I can go on the Cricut and do 10 designs and I have a nice streamlined performance for all of that. Um, but it definitely is a little messy and it's not super Instagram pretty, uh, but it gets the job done. And I actually have a big selection of um, sewing materials that I was able to get from um, FabCycle in Vancouver. And so they all do recycled textile fabrics um, that then they, they then sell for a very reasonable price. Um, and they also offer free scraps. So I'm able to uh, use quite interesting material that I wouldn't really be able to get my hands on in the Kootenays um, as well as being kind of like good for the environment and saving these textile fabrics that would have gone into the landfill. So I really like having this huge selection of fabric for a very affordable price to kind of make these fun dice bags. Um, I definitely don't want to have an assembly line of doing like a hundred of the same design so it works really well for my process. And then I also have a workshop which we also do like any sort of home projects. I do them in there as well. And sometimes my husband does like a Dungeons and Dragons related project. So he's made a dice tower in the workshop. And he also made a really neat laser engraved box for his metal dice with actually like foam inserts for each dice shape that he has. So it's definitely a nice uh, workshop. It's a little bit dusty. So I don't do a lot of I don't really want to sew or do any sort of cricket work in there just because it's like right next to the furnace. But it's also a great place to store my books and my products um, so that I'm not toting them all around to every event I do. So this is a great spot for me to fulfill orders and I keep all of my prints here and kind of anything that is kind of uh, completed merchandise I keep in this room as well as some special products that I just kind of have up for decoration to kind of spice up the room in there. So those are my like three workstations and then I also I kind of just use my iPad everywhere. Mostly I do it um, in bed. I do a lot of drawing um, as well as on the couch on my days off from my full-time job of working as a graphic designer. So I like the flexibility that the iPad offers. It's definitely, I recommend if you already have an iPad, that is game changing to get Procreate on it and get an Apple Pencil. Um, or you can even get like uh, cheap, more inexpensive pencils that are still pretty high fidelity, just like a, a, a step above just the, the simple stylus. I find you want that pressure sensitivity and uh, the Apple Pencil works perfectly for me. That's kind of like my workspace and kind of a little bit of what I do. Um, again, the comics are more my focus, so I do spend a lot of time upstairs in my house working on my computer, doing the layout of a new project or working on the iPad illustrating. Um, so some kind of recent projects I've worked on would be um, my Unnatural Dogs 
uh, coloring book. So I did that all on the iPad and then I just laid it out. And it was really simple because it was just illustrations um, depending on the project. Sometimes the graphic design is quite time consuming. So if I do a children's book, that's quite a bit of work um, to make sure the text lays out and make sure I'm dealing with there's like creep and bleed and all this kind of technical stuff to worry about when you're doing um, a children's book or a more a, a bigger book project other than a simple coloring book which you don't really have to worry about the margins and the bleed and all that kind of stuff as much because I just print them really basic um, but definitely if you're doing like a, a big run of a graphic novel or a kid's book there's actually a lot of graphic design that goes into it um, so I feel very fortunate that I have these skills in my wheelhouse that I'm able to save on the cost of printing because I can bring in a print ready file um, so that's actually something that I would highly recommend if you're interested in doing your own graphic novels is learning a little bit of the graphic design if you feel comfortable. Um, I took a lynda.com um, tutorial to learn how to use InDesign basically and then I also use it at work so I've, I'm pretty comfortable with it now. But that's just saves you so much money because um, graphic design can get really expensive for a reason because it's quite a bit of knowledge is needed and the pro uh, products themselves are quite expensive. Um, if you get the full suite of Adobe, it's pretty much $100 a month. So it's a, it's a big undertaking, um, but if you have access to any sort of graphic design tools or any sort of basic experience, I highly recommend trying to do as much of the graphic design as possible same with doing your own covers, um, just because it just saves you so much in the long run. And um, a lot of, if you want to do any sort of print on demand for your comics, you definitely want to be able to make a print ready file that's going to work. Um, so they will ask for the correct margins, the correct size. Um, so having those skills really work to your, in your favor and help minimize costs that you maybe don't expect when you undertake a graphic novel project. So that's just kind of like my two cents on if you would like to do your own self-publishing. Um, if you're more interested in just doing illustrations, um, a great way is to definitely, I would recommend either using a computer or the iPad. Um, I actually have a very small drawing tablet I use on my computer. Um, I was getting arm strain from doing the big one. Um, I had like a large one and actually making it smaller for some reason seemed to help a lot because the, the movements were a little bit more minute instead of these big sweeping motions. So um, I've kind of been experimenting over the years trying to find what's nice. Um, but this drawing tablet cost me less than $100 on Black Friday and it has been really useful for me. So you definitely don't need to drop a lot of money if you want to get started with digital artwork. Um, I would kind of just recommend no, no matter what stage you're at is just to make like small changes as you go. So I have all this stuff now, but they were all very, um, very spread out purchases for the most part. And, um, as I upped my skills and my comfort level with the technology, that's when I would upgrade. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend for everybody to immediately buy a thousand dollars worth of Apple products that so you can do very basic digital illustration. If you already have access to an iPad, that's great. Procreate is really inexpensive and then you can get a more basic stylus and that's a good way to go. Um, but I definitely don't, re I don't recommend just dropping a ton of money if you don't, if you don't know if you're going to move that way or um, if you just don't have the experience that you're going to be able to use it. Because even though I do a lot of digital illustration, buying the iPad was almost like still a risk because I wasn't sure I was going to use it. And at this point, I've had it for about six months, and I feel like it's already paid for itself just in the amount of material I've been able to produce, but it was still a risk. So I definitely recommend starting small and building up as your skills get better. Um, the same would go for if you don't want to do digital, if you want to do just traditional work, get a basic you know, marker, sketchbook, and some microns and start there before committing to like alcohol markers or like a ton of Posca's. I've been slowly buying Posca paint pens essentially. So I bought like five to begin with to see if I liked it instead of buying like the giant set of all of them or, you know, the set of 10, I believe that's like well over a hundred dollars. Um, so I definitely like, don't like, if you have the money and you really are interested in doing it, then I'm not saying don't spend it. 
but I'm saying just like think about what would be like the the easiest way for you to start doing it without breaking the bank too much because I just I I feel so guilty if I start a project and realize that like I've spent all this unnecessary money when I could have done it just in a sketchbook with a micron or you know I could have done it on my hundred dollar tablet instead of on my thousand dollar iPad so that's definitely like you see all these people with all this amazing technology and all these amazing tools and hopefully they're like me and they've taken their time to build up that supply instead of just dropping money unnecessarily on all of these um all these things that you might not necessarily jive with like I personally am not a fan of alcohol markers and I'm just so glad that I never went out and bought a ton of them I practice with friends I you know watch videos and tutorials and it just wasn't my jam same with watercolor I just have never been very comfortable with using it I don't want to drop the money on it and I just don't that doesn't really work with my style so I definitely recommend like watching videos and watching free content and seeing what works for you um, because you would just hate to drop a ton of money on something and feel all this guilt that it doesn't work for you. You know, it's like picking a sport and then realizing after one practice that you don't like it, right? So just use all the tools at your advantage on the internet or ask friends if you have art, other artist friends and see what works for you because I definitely, like, I've had regret when, <laughs> you know, committing to a new step and there's definitely been things that I've spent money on that I absolutely didn't need. Um, so I just recommend doing your research and starting small um, and just, you know, like seeing what works for you at these small steps. So definitely, like if you want to get into digital illustration, you're going to need something to be able to do it on. So if you already have a laptop, then I would recommend just a Wacom drawing tablet with relatively good pressure sensitivity. But again, that's only going to cost you about $100 to get a small one. And if you already have an iPad, then yes, I would recommend getting Procreate because I believe it's like $16 and then also getting a nice stylus, essentially a level up from the basic stylus type. So there's an LG one that would run you probably about $90. Um, so that's something I would recommend if you want to get into digital illustration and, um, you know, up your skill a little bit and you already have the iPad. But I just, I, I would hate to see people spend all this money on these tools that they don't have yet and then maybe not enjoy digital illustration and realize they actually want to paint with acrylic or something. So I just, I just highly recommend doing your research and talking to other artists and asking questions and playing around. And that's what I think was great about my kind of incremental way of how I got all of these things is that I watched a lot of videos, you know, I bought a couple of Hoskas and I played around with them. And same with the Microns, like I love using them now. I have all the different thicknesses. Um, but I started out with just one and just a basic $10 sketchbook. And before that, it was ballpoint pens on napkins. Um, so you really don't need to spend a lot of money to get started making art at the base level and that's kind of what I would recommend. It's just anytime you sort of feel like you've maxed your capacity and your quality, that's sort of what happened with me with my comics is that I didn't have time to sit down to my computer to draw. So I was doing them all physically in a, in a sketchbook, but I wasn't able to take the photos quite right and I just didn't feel like I was getting the quality that they deserve to have. So that upgrade to the iPad then made it so that I could draw anytime, anywhere I could upload directly to Instagram. I didn't have to take photos of my artwork. So that worked really well for me. But again, like if you really want to do traditional artwork, maybe you just need to get a tripod for your for your phone and some ring lights. And maybe that's actually what's going to work better for you. Um, so I am available on all of these avenues down here. And if you have any questions at all about getting started, I have a lot that I've tried. Um, so I'm more than willing to discuss this and, uh, you know, help you decide what's the best way to go about your own art practice. Just make your art and um, level up as needed, but don't, you know, commit immediately to something that you're not really sure that is going to work for you. Thank you so much for joining me as this little studio visit and some tips and tricks on getting started. And again, you are free to contact me if you have any questions at all. I love discussing 
how to level up your own art practice and meet fellow artists who are interested in doing digital illustration or traditional stuff as well. Um, So feel free to reach out. And I hope that this has been kind of a helpful way to get started in your own art practice.